As you may be aware, Jordan Peterson has been incorporated into a Marvel Comics character named Red Skull. If you're not up on your comic book characters, Red Skull is a Nazi supervillain and the archenemy of Captain America. He first appeared in 1941 and is often depicted as a Nazi agent or acolyte of Adolf Hitler. In the latest edition of Marvel Comics, we can see Captain America saying, So, let me guess, your brother, he disappears into the internet, and when he comes back out, he can't stop talking about this new theory of the world, and that theory comes from one man. Captain America then looks at a computer screen featuring the image of Red Skull, talking about 10 rules for life, chaos and order, the feminist trap, and Carl Luger's genius. Carl Luger, 1844 to 1910, was the mayor of Vienna and the founder of Austria's Christian Social Party, which was a populist and anti-Semitic organization that influenced the National Socialist Party. In Mein Kampf, Hitler writes, I hold Dr. Karl Luger as the most eminent type of German Burgermeister. Captain America arrives at the conclusion that Red Skull is encouraging young men to become extremists by telling them what they've always longed to hear, that they're secretly great, that the whole world is against them, that if they're men, they'll fight back, and bingo, that's their purpose. That's what they'll live for, and that's what they'll die for. Jordan Peterson's response to being portrayed as a Nazi supervillain was somewhat typical, although clearly tempered by input from his daughter, Michaela, who claims to be running her father's business. Peterson tweeted, What the hell? and contacted Marvel Comics, presumably to complain. Marvel Comics informed Peterson they had the right to imply whatever they liked. Peterson then told Canada's National Post that the caricature was representative of critics who conveniently locate the problem of evil somewhere other than in their own hearts and souls. The National Post is a far-right, albeit relatively literate, tabloid that has excelled at providing Jordan Peterson's safe harbor. To further downplay the wild suggestion that he could be anything like a Nazi, Peterson appeared on the alt-right YouTube platform Modern Wisdom, where he said, half upset and half in jest, I've been called a Nazi before. It's not pleasant. But this is one step beyond that. I mean, Nazi apparently isn't enough. I have to be called a magical super Nazi. Peterson smiled. The host laughed. Ha, what a pair of kidders. To be certain, Peterson has been called a Nazi before. In an interview with Camille Palia, who's a long-term advocate of child pornography, really, look it up, Peterson lamented that becoming quote-unquote physical was forbidden in discourse with women, and so I don't think men can control crazy women. He added that a crazy woman from Toronto had been organizing this movement, let's say, against me and some other free speech people, and she's quite, um, offensive. She compared us to Nazis, publicly, using the swastika, which wasn't really something I was all that fond of, but I'm defenseless against that kind of female insanity because the techniques I would use against a man who is employing those tactics are forbidden to me. By tactics he would use against a man, Peterson meant physical violence. In other words, while denying that he was a Nazi, he was lamenting that it was socially unacceptable for men to assault women. And it's this sort of indignant refutation, combined with misogyny and troglodyte talk, that has such appeal to his mostly male followers, who probably number in the millions. Also, one of the free speech people that the crazy woman was accusing of being a Nazi was likely Faith Goldie, who was later outed as a Nazi after she and other Nazis had a conversation in which they paraphrased bits of Mein Kampf to each other during the Charlottesville Unite the Right rally in 2017. Goldie had been scheduled to make yet another public appearance with Peterson after Charlottesville, but was disinvited. Thereafter, Peterson reluctantly distanced himself from Goldie, not because she had endorsed the white genocide conspiracy theory, but because she had become too hot a commodity. Peterson emphasized that his decision to stay away from Goldie had been extraordinarily difficult. To be fair to Jordan Peterson, when men have suggested that he's a Nazi, he has also threatened them. A self-professed champion of free speech, Peterson is still involved in a defamation suit that he brought against an educator at Sir Wilfrid Laurier University for having the temerity to express his opinion and compare Peterson to Hitler. That such charges have been taken seriously is a blight on democracy, especially since Peterson has used the lawsuit to demonize universities and advertise his brand. 
And when the Indian essayist Pankaj Mishra accused Peterson of teaching fascist mysticism, he took to Twitter to call Mishra a sanctimonious prick and an arrogant racist son of a bitch. He then threatened, if you were in my room at the moment, I'd slap you happily. Do you see the pattern? Peterson is not evil. Marvel Comics is evil. Peterson is not crazy. The woman who called him a Nazi is crazy. Peterson is for free speech, hence why he sues people who practice free speech. Peterson is not arrogant or racist. Pankash Mishra is arrogant and racist. Also, it's worth noting that Peterson has not announced that he'd like to hit or sue anyone at Marvel Comics. I wonder if that has anything to do with Marvel Comics having an estimated net worth of $4 billion, a team of lawyers who were doubtlessly consulted before the newest Captain America edition went to print, and a demographic that likely intersects with Peterson's. Getting his primitive foot soldiers to detest higher education is a cinch. Getting them to hate the amazing Spider-Man is, well, another matter entirely. Instead of going apoplectic, as is his wont, Jordan Peterson was almost certainly counseled by his daughter, Michaela, to try and turn a negative into a positive. To do this, father and daughter would need to follow a tried-and-true formula, deny links to Nazism while signaling to their base that JP is indeed a Nazi. Jordan and Michaela did this by announcing a line of merchandise featuring the slogan, Hail Lobster. Cult followers can buy a Hail Lobster poster, a Hail Lobster t-shirt, or a Hail Lobster sticker. The Hail Lobster logo looks like the one on Red Skull's belt buckle. Why fight a corporation when you can embrace the Nazi and give all the proceeds to charity? Oh, by the way, did you spot the alt-right signal? Hail Lobster? It sounds a little like Hail Hitler. Isn't that funny? I'm sure Holocaust survivors and World War II veterans would find it uproarious. But then, the Petersons could probably hawk Welcome to Auschwitz hand towels, give the proceeds to charity and their acolytes would, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, see nothing wrong. And if some journalist worked up the courage to tepidly imply that this was in some way unacceptable, Peterson's followers would likely send them hate mail or tell each other to boycott their publication. They would circle the wagons and be drawn ever deeper into what is a massive neo-Nazi cult, one that is comparable to, but much more covert than, QAnon. That the slogan for the line of merchandise is Hail Lobster is fitting because Peterson likes to demonstrate the Zig Heil both in public, as he has done in Oslo, and in class, as he has done at the University of Toronto. Of course, he could always say he does this as a visual aid, but nobody needs a visual aid, do they? We all know what the Nazi salute looks like. Besides, one of Peterson's visual aids spanned an enthusiastic 15 seconds and was paired with a visual aid of goose-stepping. His excuses are always transparent, and are meant to be, because they must double as signals to the alt-right. He thumbs his nose at his critics, and his silly lobster military clack their claws and cheer. Furthermore, Peterson makes sure to stagger his denial and neo-Nazi signaling with unconcealed praise, as evidenced in these three quotes taken from three lectures. 1. And Hitler was also an admirer of willpower, so he could stand like this, Peterson gives the Nazi salute, for eight hours in the back of a car. 2. Hitler was very proud of his ability to stand like this. He gives the Nazi salute. For eight hours in the back of a car, and his ability to withstand trying circumstances by willpower alone. 3. So Hitler was very proud of his ability, for example, to stand in the back of a car, going through the hordes of people that were worshipping him, and to stand like this, he gives the Nazi salute, for, like, eight hours at a time, he saw that as a single application of will, and he was also obsessed with hygiene, right? Within the praise was the signaling. Did you catch it? Hitler was an admirer of willpower, and Peterson likes to cite Nietzsche's will to power, and he reminds his followers that Nietzsche's Superman was a concept that the Nazis really, and I quote, pulled off. So much as mentioning Nietzsche can be an alt-right dog whistle. Another neo-fascist gambit is to quote lines from Nietzsche that Hitler paraphrased, or that sound like something Hitler would have said. For instance, it's well known that one method Hitler used to dehumanize the Jews was to liken them to parasites, and Peterson told his students at Harvard, Nietzsche said at one point, I mean, this is the kind of statement that could be easily interpreted as fascist, and you know, Nietzsche gets interpreted that way now and then. 
He said, the strength of a society can be measured by the number of parasites that it can bear. Did you catch the joke? When Peterson said his statement could be easily interpreted as fascist, that's because it was fascist. Also, Peterson said that Hitler was obsessed with hygiene. He meant frequent bathing, but this was a lie. Lying about Hitler is another alt-right dog whistle, which is one of the reasons why Peterson has told his students that Hitler was elected in a large majority, a landslide vote, the kind no modern democratic leader ever gets. Although Peterson's opponents sometimes note that such statements are false, they are missing the point, which is, it's the straight-faced hyperbole and outright lies that help to inform his followers and prospective converts of his true malevolent intentions. Assessments about Peterson from the left are often naive and shallow. Peterson is a grifter. Peterson gets his facts wrong. Peterson doesn't know science. Peterson said something that doesn't make sense. That's like reading a biography of Joseph Goebbels and concluding, you know, he wasn't very honest. Peterson's response to being compared to a Nazi supervillain, including the launch of a line of Hail Lobster merch, is a mere continuation of the sick joke that he's been playing on people for decades. Not only is Jordan Peterson a Nazi, he's a devoted, dedicated, tireless Nazi, and has been ever since he was a teenager growing up in rural Alberta, a province that used to have a Nazi premier and has produced at least two Nazi educators. Peterson routinely praises, defends, identifies with, and downplays the malevolence of Adolf Hitler and other Nazis. He has come to the rescue of a notorious neo-Nazi and criticized the Canadian government for prosecuting him. He has said that Adolf Eichmann, a man who bragged about playing a part in sending millions of Jews to their deaths, was just a mama's boy. He has stated that Martin Heidegger merely got tangled up in Nazism, like an innocent lamb who got snagged up in some bushes. Heidegger was a professor and a Nazi propagandist who ordered his students to obey the Fuhrer. Peterson networks with and defends a sizable group of white supremacists and alt-right cranks, and he continuously implies that democratic governments and progressive universities are autocratic and run by communists. Peterson has fist-pumped while opining that when Hitler shot himself with Berlin on fire, he succeeded. Just as he has fist-pumped when he talked about the reunification of Germany. And no, it wasn't because communism collapsed in the GDR, and families could be reunited, and democracy could be restored. It was because new order could emerge from the chaos of being. He has asked his fans to ask themselves whether the Nuremberg trials were fair or not. He and his followers constitute a public menace. And journalists, whose job it is to expose, or at least notice, an enormous international neo-Nazi cult, are not woke, as the charge goes, but asleep at the wheel. Ultimately, the attention given to the Red Skull story makes for a series of fluff pieces, light weekend reading involving superheroes in the entertainment industry. I'm guilty too, after all the cover and title of this video are meant to attract viewers. Still, in the latest spate of Jordan Peterson media pieces, we see little substance and zero evidence of Peterson's obvious affiliations with neo-Nazism. If you would like to know how Peterson has made a career of warning against Nazism while surreptitiously stumping for Nazism, sadly, you won't get it from the media. However, you will get it from reading The Devil and His Due, How Jordan Peterson Plagiarizes Adolf Hitler. Thank you for listening and viewing, and if you enjoyed this video, please share.